they had found that it, it must have taken place between two and three weeks prior to, to uh, Roy's death. So Roy Gregg was murdered, we believe, on the instructions of Dennis Mack. He was supposed to have an alibi at the time. As far as we know, he was working on an oil rig. And the, the rescuer, by the way, was another oil rig worker who he knew. Or any, or, and or other members of the rape gang. Every single member of the rape gang is a potential murder suspect. So that is the story of, of, of Roy Gregg and what has happened there. So we are obviously pressing very hard on that side of the story as well. So we have multiple rapes and we have almost certainly a murder here. I asked Anne about, um, about her brother before he died. And I said to her, was there anything strange about Roy just before he died? And she said, well, not really. We were all trying to think that. It seems he died so in such strange circumstances, but we couldn't understand anything at all. And I've gone over in my mind, was there something strange about his behavior prior to his death? And now I know what I know. So that, that makes, amplifies the fact. She said, all I can say is, knowing my brother as I did, he said he was a person, if there's a problem, he would, he'd usually like to think about it, first of all. He wouldn't just come out with it. He'd think about it. He says, and I did think at the time there was something on his mind that he, he wanted to tell me about. He said, but obviously I could have had no knowledge it was something of this magnitude. He, I said, it must have been just some personal problem. But there was something there that I knew he would talk to me about so, at some point, but he was, he was just thinking about it. I think another important thing just to mention is that it was Holly's 18th birthday, six days after Roy died. And he had planned the party for her. This was all planned. He brought a beautiful bracelet. So there was absolutely no reason why he would kill himself. And why would he, as he was so protective towards his sister and his niece? The last thing that he would ever want to do would be to leave them to the mercy of Dennis Mackey and the gang. But he had to be silenced to shut him up so that he couldn't testify, not only against Mackey, but Sheriff Buchanan and police officer Terry Major and the nurses and the social workers and the solicitor and all the rest of the despicable gang. He had to be shut up. So this is the, the, this, the case that we, we're having to deal with at the moment. It is a really, really appalling case, I think you'll agree, having heard all this. We've got a long way to go yet. Um, we are getting some support from some of the politicians in Scotland now at various levels who really believe that this case, that the lid cannot be kept on this case for much longer because we have so much documentary evidence. What we are looking for is someone in the media who's bold enough to do something about this. What I was sick and tired of hearing the major people in the media say, oh, we can't print, there's no proof, we'll get sued, and all this kind of thing. I said, no, you won't. I said, oh, we've got the evidence here. There's no way this can come to court, and we could call us all as witnesses, Holly and myself, the rape gang, the rest of the victims. Do you really think that anybody is going to take you to court over on this? But no, they, we, well, I don't think it's to do with litigation. I think it's other people putting pressure on them, but there we are. But I was very concerned that nothing was happening. What I did in October, just going back to the 3rd of October, I decided that uh, I would go and make a, a public speech at the Quaker Hall in, uh, in Edinburgh. And I in doing so, I would name all the members of the gang publicly and all the known victims. Because I wanted them, if, if somebody was going to go for me, I wanted them to go for me then. So I did that. And I also sent it the, all the details to everyone, including... Buchanan's fellow, fellow sheriffs in Aberdeen. I sent them all the details to them at, at the court there. And so everyone knows about it. All the MSPs know about it. Uh, all the councillors in Aberdeen know about it. Everybody knows the background of this case. And I'm sure that very few of them can actually really dispute the facts about it. Has anybody got the guts to do it? The, me the media know all about it. Has anybody got the guts to take this story further? I do hope so. In two weeks' time, I'm going to Aberdeen myself, uh, and I'm going to do my own little protest. I'm going to take a banner there, and I'm going to take leaflets, again, with all the names of the people involved. We actually have blitzed Aberdeen with leaflets, by the way, uh, to, uh, to, to let the people in the areas where the paedophiles operate know about what's going on. And I'll be doing that again in Aberdeen in two weeks' time, and I will also be going... I'll be standing outside Marks and Spencer's, which I've never been to Aberdeen in my life, but I believe that's the place to stand on Union Street. And it's also quite conveniently very close to the Sheriff's Court. So I'm going on a weekday, it'll be a Friday when I'm there, and I'm going to spend a bit of time at Marks and Spencer's, and then I'm going to go down to the Sheriff's Court 
with all the leaflets naming Sheriff Buchanan, and I'm going to hand them out there. As one way or another, I'm absolutely determined that justice must be served in this terrible, terrible case. It really is appalling. Um, one other thing I will say, I'm almost at the end of my speech now, but Holly, in the nature of things, has been coming out with more information about other abusers, even after the 8th of September. And one, there, are, there are three other people, particularly, that uh, we're very concerned about. One in particular is the head of Beechwood Special School in Aberdeen, where Holly was a pupil. His, man, his name is Andrew Young. Uh, Holly has confirmed that he abused her. He also abused her at the house of the police officer, Terry Major. And I understand that he's taking other children at this present time to be abused by Peter Fowler Rings in Aberdeen. While they're at school, the parents are taking them to school. He takes them or has people taking them on the bus to, to his friends in his circle. So Young has been named as well. Have the police done anything about that? Have the social services done anything about it? No, they've done nothing. So this man is at large at the moment, quite apart from the rest of the paedophile gang, who can carry on their evil ways, knowing they have the full protection of the Lord Advocate of Scotland. This is effectively a spa state-sponsored rape gang, supposed to be a civilised society. Yes, you know, sometimes they ridicule country, people in other countries about the way they govern their legal system, but this is happening here in the UK, part of the United Kingdom, in Scotland right now and nobody is doing anything about it. Nobody who has the power is doing anything about it at all. It's a terrible, terrible case. Um, all I can say is I'm going to do everything I possibly can to, to, uh, to make sure that people are brought to justice as quickly as possibly can, as possibly can, because we're not talking about past crimes here, we're talking about crimes that are going on at the moment. The Lord Advocate should be dismissed without any delay. She should be arrested and charged for repeatedly perverting the course of justice. Mr. Salmon knows it, as I said. Mr. McCaskill knows it. The curious thing we found out about Mr. McCaskill the other day, um, he used to work for Levy and McRae, the law firm we're representing Mrs. Angelini. By a strange coincidence. But what a can of worms. Absolutely <coughs> terrible. It really is that bad. Um, would anyone like to ask any questions? I've, there's a lot of other things, but I, I couldn't include everything. Thank you.